Welcome. My name is Katherine Garrell, and I work at the Northwest Portland Area Indian Health Board, helping to raise and manage grant funding that supports the board's many programs. The short video on using health data to write strong grants is part of a series of videos designed to help you obtain and use health data. To see the rest of the videos, click the web link. Okay, let's get started. One of the amazing things about health data is that it can help us tell powerful stories about what's happening in our communities. When it comes to writing strong grants, health data is vital for helping to share information that catches grant reviewers' attention, allows them to understand the need we're highlighting, and paints a clear picture of how our specific proposed use of funding would effectively address the issue. There are many types of grants that can support your work. For example, there are grants offered by federal, state, and local government agencies. There are also grants that are offered by private organizations, such as foundations. One common space that tribes and native serving organizations can use to look for potential federal grants is grants.gov. When you go to grants.gov, you'll notice that federal grants are administered by different federal agencies, including IHS, Indian Health Service, or Centers for Disease Control, CDC, as well as by many other federal departments, such as the Department of Education. Similarly, state and local government agencies offer grants that are administered by different programs, projects, or initiatives. Private foundations are required to give away monies annually through offering grants to tax-exempt organizations. A couple of good resources to find private grants include Philanthropy News Digest, that's philanthropynewsdigest.org, slash RFPS, and Candid, formerly GuideStar, www.candid.org. Something to keep in mind is that no matter who potential funders might be, tribes have the right to data sovereignty. This includes being in control of how tribal data is collected, owned, and used. Some principles of tribal data sovereignty also apply to data on American Indian and Alaska Native people off tribal lands. To learn more about how to protect the rights of the people you serve, visit Native Data at nativedata.npaihb.org. When funding announcements for grants come out, make sure to carefully review specific grant proposal guidelines, noting all required elements of the proposal package, as well as sponsor-specific formats, eligibility requirements, and funding amounts, both minimum requests considered, as well as the award ceiling, as federal agencies refer to the maximum amount for the request that would be considered. Funding restrictions. Costs that the funder or agency will not support through grant funding, as well as how many years funding is being offered for, and any other special administrative requirements, including reporting, invoicing, and payments. Knowing this information, will help you write more competitive grants. Although the specific elements and requirements for each grant will vary and may include other elements such as a project abstract or summary, budget, budget narrative, and work plan, there are some general tips that we can provide for using health data to write a strong grant application. Grant proposals often include background and significance sections. In these sections of your proposal, you're trying to communicate that a particular issue in your community is a big problem, there will be significant costs if nothing is done, your proposed solution will work, and your proposed solution is innovative and sustainable, if that applies. To help you build a convincing argument that your community is facing a big problem, you can use health data. Health data can, for instance, help you describe just how big the problem is, how long it's been happening for, how it's changed over time, and what the root causes are. 
You can also use health data to tell the story of how your community's experience of this health challenge compares to other populations. When you're trying to build a convincing argument that your community is facing a big problem, avoid the tendency to do a data dump where you share every piece of data you find. Rather, be concise and use your data findings strategically to make a few key points that help connect the dots between the problem, its root causes, your solution, and the funder's goals. Take the time to read the agency's or funder's website and other materials to help you speak their language. This will make your grant writing more persuasive though you should take care not to promise any projects or propose any activities that will take the focus away from the mission that you're working to promote. Also, don't beat around the bush. Rather, take your time to clearly explain your take-home message. Funders receive tons of proposals. Make it easy for them to understand your story and that your tribe or organization is uniquely qualified and suited to succeed. Finally, unless the agency or funder does not permit it through their submission guidelines, use visuals to present data whenever possible. Presenting data in a visual manner is part of helping funders clearly understand your story. Again, if you're interested in learning to effectively present health data and want tips for avoiding the tendency to do a data dump, check out this video next. Now that you've painted a picture of the current challenge, next, take a moment to describe what the cost will be if nothing is done. For example, in Ellen's community, the incidence of tribal community members with diabetes has increased every year since 2015. Ellen could write to describe the cost if nothing is done this way. Looking at recent data, show data, including the numbers and percentages, if available, if we do nothing, it is highly likely that the incidence of diabetes among tribal members in our region will continue to rise. This will likely exacerbate the negative health and economic impacts that disproportionately affect Native communities. To help convince grant reviewers that your solution will work, consider describing other examples of where your proposed solution has been successful or promising. If possible, demonstrate this using other examples of Native or tribal organizations who have applied your proposed solution or similar models and had success. Finally, to help convince grant reviewers that your solution is innovative, focus on questions that have not been answered by other research. In other words, how will your project address any gaps in the understanding that exists? The goals and objectives portion of your grant proposal is another section where you can use your health data to make your proposal shine. For those that may be new to grant writing, the goals and objectives that you develop in your proposal will help you measure the impacts of your project. They will also help you decide whether the solutions you propose to address the challenge are working. Often, when you're researching the data that's available to write your background in significant sections, you learn what data is available to measure the impacts of your proposed project. If you're wondering, well, how do I obtain health data? Consider watching this video next. When you write a goals and objectives section of a grant proposal, you'll need to create a few goal statements. A goal statement is a broad description of the intended results of your program or project. It helps the funder gain an overall understanding of the longer term purposes of the project, but it does not address the specifics that will be accomplished or what will be produced. For example, a goal statement could be to reduce the number of sugar sweetened beverages consumed by youth at our school. Remember to limit the number of goals to what your organization can realistically accomplish. Objectives are the measurable activities that you need to do in order to achieve a specific goal. Here's an example of two objectives that could help you achieve your goal. By the end of the year, 75% of students will participate in five Rethink Your Drink presentations. 
by the end of the first month, 500 reusable water bottles will be purchased and distributed to students for them to keep at their desks. One method for writing good objectives is the SMART method. S-M-A-R-T, objectives, are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. For example, let's revisit our first objective. This objective is very specific. We know that we can measure it by taking attendance at all Rethink Your Drink presentations. We know it's attainable. After all, we can host at least seven or eight presentations in one year. We know it's relevant because Rethink Your Drink presentations will likely have an impact on our goal of reducing the number of sugary beverages students drink because these presentations have been shown to have this effect at other schools. We also know that the specific objective is time-based. We said that we could accomplish this objective by the end of the year. The evaluation portion of your grant proposal is the final section that we will discuss. Strong grants include a solid evaluation plan. In your evaluation plan, you will explain what pieces of data or indicators you will use to measure your goals and objectives, as well as the timeline for analyzing your results. For your objective of at least 75% of students participating in five Rethink Your Drink presentations before the end of the year, you could use percentage of students who participated in five Rethink Your Drink presentations as an indicator. Keep in mind that the indicators we should use both meet the requirement of our funder and the people we serve. This might mean that we choose to use a mix of funder measures and measures that are important to community members to assess the goals and objectives of our program or project. There are many different sources of data, just a few are listed on this slide. Which you use depends on what specific goals or objectives you're measuring, what kind of resources you have to do your evaluation, and what kind of data will be seen as both important and credible by your community and the funder. Using mixed methods is often a good strategy. This means collecting some quantitative data or numbers data through, for example, survey questions and some qualitative data or talking data, for example, through interviews. Effectively using health data to write strong grants can take time and practice. If you have any questions about the specifics, of what we've talked about today, consider connecting with your local Tribal Epidemiology Center, or TEC. TECs are a great resource when it comes to writing strong grants. Not only can they help you with obtaining and analyzing health data, they can also help you to translate your data into action through creating strategic plans, developing data-driven policies, and creating effective grant proposals. To contact your area tech, consider reaching out to a tech director. You can learn more about your tech at www.tribalepicenters.org. If you're a member of a tribe in the Pacific Northwest and you need data services, contact the Northwest Tribal Epidemiology Center at NPAIHB at npaihb.org. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. To watch the next video in the series on using health data to create policies and support political advocacy, click the link below.